Welcome! It's May 19th, 2021. We are with the Valencia Isles Culture Club. And I am Sharon Koskoff, public mural artist, talking about my confessions today. Uh, we're doing an online Zoom. And uh, this is one of my most recent projects because we want to welcome everyone to 2021. We want to leave our troubles behind of 2020. And we want to welcome 2021. And uh, this is a mural I did for the Downtown Development Authority. Love downtown Delray Beach. And we, they put it right by the Christmas tree and the Hanukkah menorah. And uh, it was only supposed to stay till January, but it's still there today if you went to Pineapple Grove. And how does that happen? So this is my patio, which I had to cover everything up and, and get ready to make into a studio. And uh, this is Maruska from the DDA and they literally brought me the panels because I wouldn't leave the house, right? So they brought me the panels, they brought the walls to me and then you sketch out a mural. It's not easy, is it? You, you know, you make a lot of mistakes and changes and you measure things and you, you get your thoughts together. There was a sketch and you start to paint and uh, they wanted it to look like uh, water, you know, writing in the sand. So I had to figure out how to do that. And actually this is in reverse of the finished product um, because I did this with a, a concrete, but there it is. There's the finished Love Downtown Delray Beach. And uh, there's my name. So I actually want to show you something real quick. Uh, I teach at Old School Square and we just said that Barbara Weinstein is uh, one of my artists. I, it's student work, but she's an artist. Uh, Tuesdays, one to four. And I wanted to show you this quick little thing. The evolution of art. Beginning, middle, end. All collages done at home on Zoom. Tuesdays, one to four. New term starts next Tuesday. So these are all varied artists, uh, students, you might say, or seniors, and we get together at Old School Square on Zoom, one to four, just like we are today, and we make art, and it's all everyone's different interest, and, and I just help you move along. It looked like they were all kind of murals. They would all be great ideas for murals. But when we are talking about 2020, uh, the previous year, a year ago, I was working on this project called Alone Together, a Corona Crisis Collage. And it was so important that I wanna show it to you and share it with you today too. This started with a sketch, Alone Together. So I had this idea, a week into the pandemic, March 21st, right? Well, I was home a whole week. I cleaned the house, I cleaned my closets. It was enough already. We had to do something. We had to get all the artists together. We had to get the community together. And I came up with this idea because I was all alone, but we were together. So I ordered a canvas online. Thank God for Amazon. Everything just comes shipped to the house. And there's those drop cloths again, now in my living room. And I had these screens, these walls from art shows. So I set them up and I start taping out my design. And then I started collecting every newspaper article from the Palm Beach Post and the Sun Sentinel regarding the pandemic. I wound up with 139 articles I printed from my printer and I hung them diagonally 
14 inches apart to represent the 14 days of the quarantine. And they're, they're diagonal because these are uh, straight lines, 90 degree angles. And I wanted this to look like a storm, like a hurricane that the coronavirus has attacked us, this hurricane. And I wanted to socially distance. How do you do that in a mural? So I made cut out letters with the idea that they would float in front, six inches in front of the mural. Here I am a cutting out phone. And I wanted this mural to be dedicated to all the people who went to heaven for the coronavirus. So I used toilet paper tubes, which we all know were so important to us. And I painted them to look like heaven as a border on the uh, uh, frame for the mural. Also, these are the spacers that I was going to put in front of each of those cutouts. So it would stand away from the mural. It would have been so easy to just paste the word alone on top of together, but no, I wanted this really to be significant. Here's the back where with the spacers glued on. Here they are painted, because I'm a professional. Everything is painted on the back and the rear, even though no one would ever see the back. And what I did was I made a call to artists. I, I put it out to the Art Deco Society, to public artists, to send me a six inch square of art that was related to the COVID uh, or that they made during COVID or that had some meaning to them. And these were the submissions I got, which I kind of had to Photoshop them all because they were the wrong size and the wrong shape or, or they weren't bright enough, but all these beautiful, pieces. I got 164 pieces from 113 artists. And then I printed them all out on my computer. And then I made a mock-up of where I was going to place them, the composition. You just don't randomly glue things. So this is my living room. <laughs> Here it is. Look at it. Everything just became the COVID. Everything became the coronavirus. And it was blocking my front door. So I really left the house other than maybe to get the mail. And here we are, uh, where I'm pasting down the actual artwork on the letter A. And here it is all finished, ready to go. I got so many submissions and not only did I have the word alone, but I had to add two zero and two zero, 2020 to use all of them. But this is my living room. We actually get to see a, a bird's eye view of everything. And I had to pack everything up. I wrapped everything. And I brought it to the Cultural Council of Palm Beach County in Lake Worth. And they allowed me to paint on the wall where I extended this 18 foot canvas and it became a 30 foot mural. Here's the heaven, so I painted more heaven. And this is the finished product. And no one got to see this in person. It was up for three months starting June 13th through September 13th. I love the reflection in the floor. And uh, it was a long hallway, if you've ever been to the Cultural Council building, which is a free art gallery for anyone to visit at 601 South Lake Avenue in downtown uh, Lake Worth. Here you can see how it's three-dimensional. You can put your hand behind the letters. Look how it stood out, really socially distanced. And if we just read one of these headlines, it says, Florida has two deaths additional. I mean, these were early things. It made the front page of the Palm Beach Post and uh, with some of the samples of artwork. So sometimes murals are very controversial. I'm a mural artist. And here we see a picture of Diego Rivera. Remember he was married to Frida Kahlo, painting a mural. And this is the 1920s at Rockefeller Center. Well, what happened, he added uh, this picture of Lenin, this communist. And here's the finished mural. Here's the picture of Lenin. Well, when John Rockefeller found out that he painted a communist in this mural of Radio City Musical, you know, Rockefeller Center, he was furious. And the day of the opening, he had the mural painted out and covered up. No. So Diego Rivera went back to Mexico City and painted this exact mural. And you can see it today if you go to Mexico. So murals are controversial when you're a mural artist. And 
It's always been that way. People like it or they don't like it or they don't like where you put it. It's, you know, kind of permanent or temporary. At the same time in the 1920s, we have Howard Carter discovering King Tut's tomb in 1922. By 1925, everything Egyptian was all the rage. The modernism was uh, the rage. They look back into art history and they look back at Egyptian and Mayan and Aztec and Japanese, anything that was geometric, anything with a straight line. It was a revolt against Art Nouveau, which was feminine and flowery and curvy. So Art Deco in the 1925 exposition was futuristic and it began the straight line and geometry so I'm picking my first mural at age 14. Ira. And uh, <laughs> uh, there's my uh, 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 my friend at the time. I'm 17, but I painted this mural when I was 14. And what I did was I used masking tape Ira. and Ira. some black paint and some Ira. red paint. And we need everyone to mute, please, mute. And that mural was so successful in my sister's house that I went back home and I painted a mural in my bedroom. Little did I know at age 14 that these steps, this zigzag, was the beginning of Art Deco, this Egyptian pyramid. I went on to paint murals. I was using masking tape. And the way I would do this, I painted the whole wall black. And then I put masking tape all over the wall. And I painted the grays and the whites. And when I pulled off the tape was this very, very abstract kind of skyline. And I'm just in love with masking tape. We call these murals super graphics. Uh, they were just these big graphic murals. Graphic meaning very perfect and flat. Easily reproduced. So here I curve the lines. How did I do that? Well, I took the masking tape and I would put a lot of masking tape over this and I would hand cut each curve. And we started to learn more about Art Deco. Art Deco was in groups of threes, one, two, three. And it's about the straight line and it's about speed. So we call these straight lines racing stripes. This looks like a train, right? It looks like a train in motion. My mother loved that mural so much. That was from my sister when she moved that when she moved to Florida, now we see the tropical peach and the green, she wanted a similar mural. But for her, I did a, a bridge connecting that kind of design with the high ceilings that we see in Florida. And I began rounding corners all the time. This became fun. Ooh, I could round the corners. But the whole thing with the mural is you just don't paint one wall. You go on to the next wall and the next wall, you might go on to the ceiling. The whole idea in painting a mural is you don't have to stop. If you have a canvas, that's the end of the canvas. In my mixed media classes at Old School Square, I teach my students to go off the canvas. You can put something three dimensional, uh, but generally a painting has confines where the mural does not. So I now in my twenties, I get my own apartment and uh, I get this Art Deco, uh, they call it a planter. And it's a green gazelle deer. And I paint my bedroom, you know, in this green gazelle. And I start collecting. Now there's ceramics all over my house. We have a very large collection for the Art Deco Society of the Palm Beaches, all from the 20s, the 30s, the 40s, the 50s. This was my apartment. I love New York. And we see the same sculpture that was in that first uh, picture. I built the, the, the couch and the furniture. I built the table. Uh, and the apartment was a celebration of New York. We have the Empire State Building, the Chrysler Building. And of course, if you remember, we didn't really love the Twin Towers. They weren't considered architecturally beautiful and significant. So in New York, I joined the Art Deco Society. This is the 1980s. And I worked on this guide, which shows uh, the Chrysler building overlooking the Empire State Building. We see one, two, three stripes, right? Because we said everything in Art Deco is threes. And we see the eagle, which is masculine and speed and uh, all about the Art Deco era is the opposite of the Art Nouveau, which was, you know, feminine and flowery and soft. Art Deco is the fast animals, the deer, the gazelle, the eagle. 
Here, oh, here we see the gazelle again. This is a poster by Dennis Abbey for the New York Art Deco Society. And uh, I start my own business uh, where I'm New York Needlecraft. I'm hand painting needlepoint designs. And that's what people sew them. I draw the design. And here we see my favorite New York skyline mural in my apartment. And this is what a needlepoint looks like when it's sewn before it's framed, has tape around it. And I would sign everything by Sharon. Uh, and if we open up thousands, miles of needlepoint that I draw, you would find the words by Sharon. So now, you know, we're in the 21st century and you know, we have websites and you need an email address and you need all these names and codes. So now I'm by Sharon.com. It just stuck with me. Sharon Koskoff was too hard to spell. Now you could probably put in KOS and it would spell it for you. But years ago, if you didn't spell Sharon Koskoff right, you could never find me. But now, of course, by Sharon.com. I went to New York School for Interior Design. 19, I got a second degree in color theory. And I, said, and I left behind New York. I painted this painting, not a mural, on canvas so I could remember my New York roots. And of course, when you make a painting, you could put a lot more detail than a mural. A mural is meant to be very big and large scale and seen from afar. A painting, you would put in all this kind of detail to be seen close. So the first thing I do when I come to Florida is I start to paint palm trees. You don't paint palm trees when you live in New York, you paint architecture. But when you come to Florida, you are engrossed with the landscape. And why purple? Because you can. This is all about cool colors of blue, green, and purple against contrasting warm colors of the reds, oranges, and yellows. So I come to Florida and everyone says, you have to meet this lady. Barbara Bayer Capitman. She's the queen of Art Deco. They now call me the Duchess of Deco. So Barbara says, Sharon Koskoff, you will start the Art Deco Society of the Palm Beaches. And I say, what? <laughs> you know, I'm a mural artist. I'm a designer. You know, I love going to antique shops and I love, you know, talking about Art Deco and then going to see buildings, but I don't know how to start an Art Deco Society. Well, by 1988, they gave me an award, uh, the mayor, for starting the Art Deco Society. I came back to Barbara. She taught me everything I know. So what is Art Deco? She shows me this picture of the bathhouse in San Francisco. This is opposite Ghirardelli Square, if you've ever been there. And it looks like a ship because it's all about speed. Art Deco has flat roofs, rounded corners we know. We know about the groups of threes, one, two, three. We know about the steps that look like Egyptian. If we look down here, we'll see uh, an aerial view of the building. We'll see one, two, three portholes. And we see how it steps up and steps back. How it gets smaller and smaller. And she says, go find all the Art Deco in Palm Beach County. She also wanted me to go find all the Art Deco in Fort Lauderdale, but I thought that was too big of a project. Well, the outcome was I wrote the book Art Deco of the Palm Beaches for Arcadia Publishing. And here I am back in my studio. Uh, this is my bedroom in Florida. And I'm painting this painting for the Royce Hotel in Fort Lauderdale. Uh, I did a mural there and then I, they gave me a big opening. So I, I did this jazz man. And then I made this jazz man into a print along with uh, this Drusilla and Melody print. Prints are serographs, uh, limited edition serographs, which means they're original, they're hand numbered. So there's only like say number one over 200, there'll only be one of the number ones and only you know one of number three. I went to work at the Armory Art Center. I taught children's art for 15 years on Saturdays, but I discovered that this building was Art Deco. And the Norton Gallery and School of Art was leaving the school, uh, Nor the Norton, and they needed a home. And they found the home in this building a few blocks away called the Armory Art Center, which was a 1939 William Manley King building built in the Art Deco style. So I said, hey, why don't we paint this up like they, they're doing in Miami with bright, you know, pastel colors. 
And this is what it looked like, secondary colors. And we were just talking about this in class the other day. Green, purple, orange are secondary colors. Of course, here they're with white, so it's pastel. It's a peach, a mint, and a lavender. But we call this secondary colors. And uh, I never thought like, wow, I get to paint a building. Also an Art Deco element is where you have a relief telling you what's going on inside the building. In this case, it was an armory. This is what it looks like today after a new paint job. Uh, they built a sculpture building with a blue roof and they matched it. Um, I think they could do better for an art building. And, but we do see the stepping down. We see fluted ribbing, the straight lines. And we didn't talk about this. This is called an eyebrow. An eyebrow is an Art Deco element but it's a flat linear plane and it keeps the sun out. And this is what it looks like in my book, which is black and white. We see the stepping up and the stepping down. We see a, a, a central verticality uh, where what's on the left is on the right. It's a mirror image. It's a balanced building. It's symmetrical. We run our Art Deco Second Wednesday's lecture series at the Armory, although of course this year we did it online. And I painted murals in the bathrooms when we were having a big event. And I just said, why don't I quickly sponge the bathrooms uh, for the ladies to make it look more pleasant? <laughs> and I did it in one day. I was in charge of all the fundraising galas. I would, we would just put some masking, uh, not masking tape, some uh, a plastic on the walls, 100 foot roll of plastic, and I'd paint murals. This was the Mars plant, the planet, dancing on the red planet. All for one night, a big gala. Another one was uh, pop art, and they wanted me to do cartoons. I don't really like cartoons. I, oh, I do like Roy Lichtenstein, the pop art. So we did six murals for Batman, and here I am dressed as the Joker for the party. I work with the kids. I brought them to Good Sam Hospital, and we painted murals there. We did a murals on panels for Klamath Street. This is in the Armory Art Center building with working with the kids. And this was the outcome where they put this on a building that was a temporary mural. Uh, we wanted a hundred years of Klamath Street to show what it used to look like. And here I put my little poodle at the time, yum yum. And there I am. I brought the kids to the South Florida Science Museum. I was just showing these pictures the other day. We did dinosaur murals at the South Florida Science Museum. We did another dinosaur in the early childhood center at the Science Museum. This is in West Palm Beach. It's now called the uh, South Florida Science Museum and Aquarium. Uh, we, we did this also in the South Florida Science Museum uh, where we did, we, the kids entered this one room and they put their shoes down so they're in Florida. Then they were under the water. Then they were on the land. Then they were in the sky. But my favorite kind of murals are where you really change an environment. If you uh, have a beautiful home, you live in a mansion and someone came, some paints a mural, you know, it's still beautiful. But here we took this room in the, in the museum, the South Florida Science Museum, and I designed the whole mural. We painted the, the ceiling light blue and the walls yellow. Here I am painting around the light. I put a fish and made the light the eyes. And they had this big uh, light box. And here we painted the Everglades and the black of the light box picks up in the black silhouette of the, the egret. And here it is in action with all the kids. I did not know that this water toy was going to be blue and yellow when I designed this whole room, where I had them paint the blue for the ceiling and these cloud shaped windows I repeat and then the white here. And we added the monarch butterflies and migration. Everything is educational and fun. So then the South Florida Science Museum calls me up and says, we got this project. We want you to come to Riviera Beach and look at. So I go to Riviera Beach and they have these big chunks of dinosaur laying around. And they said, uh, could you paint that? So I said, well, okay, let's test it. Let's bring the head of this dinosaur inside to the facility. They had a spray booth. So the first thing I did was test the paint and I painted them out. Look how realistic these dinosaurs teeth would definitely be yellow. They wouldn't be white. But I decided not to use the oil based paint. I went with acrylic paint. And here are the people who are guarding the dinosaur making sure I do a good job. <laughs> 
and we had the volunteers, we prime it. If we were going to go with the reds because we wanted to contrast the green of the outdoor landscape of the museum. So I didn't want to paint a green dinosaur because it would blend into the grass. So here we are tinting it red. And here we left that day with the head painted in this terracotta color. So they put in uh, at the museum, they put in this base, you know, they pour the concrete, you know, just uh, constructing this was major. And they said, okay, paint it when you have a, the two weekends. So I got together my Art in the Alley artists. Art in the Alley is a project we'll see later on in the, in the project, but Art in the Alley is in Delray Beach. It's called Osceola Park. It's just south of Atlantic towards Federal. And um, what we do is we get artist volunteers. I donate all the materials and I work with Lisa and James Quillian who live in Osceola Park and they get panels of, of uh, these concrete boards and the artists paint whatever they want and then we hang them in the alleys on fences. So one day we paint and one day we party. We'll talk about that later, but here we have Sharon Krolicek painting this, you know, dinosaur. And I had to learn how to work this lift. Wasn't easy. I had to, every night I had to park it in the driveway so you know it wouldn't get stolen. Help. <laughs> so here, obviously we managed to do it. And here I am in the uh, scissor lift of painting the dinosaur, looking down at my volunteers, Art in the Alley. And we had ladders and we just had a really good time. Who gets to say I painted a 30 foot dinosaur? I mean, it was really an experience and so much fun to work with everyone. Now there was a little piece missing that we had to fill in. So we signed it, Sharon Koskoff and Art in the Alley on the concrete, which was then of course, beautifully landscaped and covered over. And there we are, yay! <laughs> it was hot and sunny. Working outdoors in the elements is really what makes mural painting and large scale painting so difficult. You have to get high, you have to get low. Uh, you know, you have to balance yourself. You have to bring all the materials out and you have to bring all the materials in. But they had a wonderful uh, opening with the kids, a big dedication. Uh, here's Sharon who looked white again with me. And they had this big gold, you know, reveal. And the kids went, ooh. And now if you go to the museum, Rosie has a mask. <laughs> Here we see the, the where it is, right there at the Science Museum. Let's talk about the Norton Gallery of Art. That's an Art Deco building with these two Art Deco sculptures by Paul Manship. Here we see the flat roof. We see the one, two, three sections. We see ribbon. We see the little stepping up down here. And we see uh, the, the, the ribbing and the ribbing here. We see the mythological, the masculine creatures of Diana with her bow shooting her boyfriend because he saw her naked. And her bow turns him into a wolf and her own, his own hounds like uh, kill him. And Paul Manship is shown here where he's, he's morphing into a, a wolf. And Paul Manship is the, the sculptor that we see every morning on TV, on NBC, at the nine o'clock Today Show from the Prometheus Fountain, the iconic Prometheus Fountain from Rockefeller Center. So Paul, when I wrote the book, I discovered that Paul Manship also did these three relief. Remember I said relief tells you what's going on in the building? And these are right above the entrance and the, the statues of, uh, Diana and Actium. Here we see inspiration, imagination, and interpretation. And I, right here in my dining room, I have this painting of Paul Manship's interpretation, which is my interpretation in color. At the Norton, I did a big demonstration uh, captured here by the Palm Beach Post of interpretation done in pastel, which is very fast motion and, and movement. Another mural we did at the Norton was called Treasures of the Norton, done in the year 2000 when they had an expansion. And they wanted me to do a mural with kids and they wanted it to be like, say, multicultural. 
And I said, well, you know, multicultural murals are wonderful, brotherhood, peace, love, but why don't we, why don't we, you know, really showcase what the Norton has to offer? Oh, that's a great idea. So we see the Matisse and the Moreau and Ruby Green and uh, all these wonderful, the Chinese collection uh, that Paul says, and if you go today, here's Van Gogh, uh, if you go today, all of these paintings are still on display at the Norton of this great mural we painted that can be seen in my book, my new book, Murals of the Palm Beaches. I did another mural, uh, Angels from the Vatican, uh, with the kids where they wanted to show modern day angels. And who is that? Our healthcare workers, our postal delivery workers. We know this more than anything now who our modern day angel and heroes are. And we did the modern day angels to contrast angels from the Vatican. 1999 was a huge exhibit at the Norton. And I made this cut out where you put your face in and you become an angel. And this is my mom, Shirley, on her uh, birthday. <laughs> The Norton Museum uh, in, had this lobby where they had these murals, uh, which is now torn down and no longer exists, but this was the original uh, terrazzo floor and terrazzo is an art deco element. And we see this Micheline Thomas is a collage mural. Uh, also, they were rotating these murals uh, once a year at the, at the Norton and uh, we see this collage mural, but she also applied paint over it. And if you visit the Norton today, it has expanded uh, uh, greatly. And this is what it now looks like with the new front entrance. And I highly recommend everyone go. They have safe practices there. Uh, we just went Thursday. And um, this is a, 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 a pop art. It's an old typewriter eraser that we see here in a water pond. We talked about the Lake Worth Cultural Council that I had the Alone Together mural in. This is a postcard of the Art Deco building. We see here this, the little stepping up. We see one, two, three, and then one, two, three again. We see some relief here, the rounded corner. Glass block, we did not discuss that. Glass block is an Art Deco element. This is what the building looks like today. And I really like it in the pure white where lighting can change the color of the building anytime. Here we see that fluted ribbing again in the rounded corner. And directly in front of this cultural council building, there's a, a fire hydrant that I painted. An artist painted fire hydrants in honor of Veterans Day. So I chose a female merchant marine and you had to use oil paint. And this took four days to paint this little uh, fire hydrant. Well, after 10 years, it showed some wear and tear. So for the Cultural Council's 40th anniversary, I restored it and painted it again, freshened it up. On the back of the Cultural Council building, which you could see today, you could drive by Cobra, who is a street artist, international street artist, painted the back of the Cultural Council building. And this is in my a book, Murals of the Palm Beaches. Uh, what, what it is, is, is a canvas outdoor museum, which we'll talk about in a bit. But he paints a portrait of Martin Luther King and then puts abstract colors over the portrait. Also in downtown Lake Worth is the Lake Worth Playhouse. This is what it used to look like uh, with its flat roof, its bandings and fluted ribbing. Uh, this awning is not Art Deco. This is just a decorative awning. But we see here Art Deco lettering in the words of Lake Worth Playhouse, thick and thin lettering. And this is what it looks like at night with the new neon marquee that I designed. We made it a triangle for Art Deco. Uh, uh, Chevron is Art Deco, triangles are Art Deco. We see the neon. When I told them they were getting neon, they said, what? We can't have neon. And now it looks like it's always been there and it is the gateway to the downtown Lake Worth area at 713 Lake Avenue. The Society for Arts, I worked there for three years. I was uh, the tour guide for the museum. And here we see the uh, lovely murals, the WPA murals of the King Library, which uh, are open.
and they were just recently restored. This is the Drama and Arts, the Society for Arts is Drama and Arts and Music and Literature. This is in Palm Beach. They also have the uh, Philip Hulatar Hula uh, Gardens, which are free. Japanese gardens you could walk through, lovely place to visit. Also in Palm Beach, we have the Flagler Museum, which is Whitehall. This is not Art Deco. How do we know? Because of the Spanish barrel tile roof. The ceramic tile roof is not Art Deco. It's asymmetrical. This It's not a flat roof. And of course, it's very formal. So we know this is not Art Deco. But if we look inside, we'll see the Gilded Age. So this is before Art Deco. This is that feminine flowery era, the Art Nouveau era, the Romantic era, the Victorian era. And the, there are 13 murals on the ceiling. You can see this in my book. There's another one in the Flagler Museum. Beautiful feminine murals, the opposite of Art Deco, right? Art Deco, we have the skinny, elongated women, the flapper, you know, the vote, the cropped hair, the opposite. This is the opposite. Art Deco is the opposite of the romantic Victorian Art Nouveau era. If you go right now to the Boca Raton Museum of Art, you'll see this Al Held mural. This is a very large mural, 14 and a half feet by 50 foot, 55 feet wide. Wow. And it's all done on a canvas. And this has such meaning to me. Uh, this uh, Boca Museum opened on my birthday, January 24th. And 18 years later, uh, two years ago, I got to speak on my birthday. January 24th, the 18th anniversary of the Boca Raton Museum Art. I gave a lecture uh, on my book, Murals of the Palm Beaches. And Al Held, his wife was Sylvia Stone. She was my sculpture teacher in college. And every night she would, you know, in class, you know, you talk about, oh, I made, you know, chicken for Al last night. And, you know, and, and, and to think that my sculpture teacher would talk about this man, Al Held, all these you know, years, and then you come see him in the Boca Museum. It was very exciting for me. Jose Alvarez is in the lobby of the Boca Raton Museum, uh, which he also had a piece in the uh, Norton. This is a permanent though, not a temporary piece. And this is a reproduction. So this is produced in a computer and then printed out and wallpapered on. So it's not painted. It's wallpapered on, uh, blown up graphic. And right now you can see a Jose Alvarez, uh, he wound up being in jail for impersonating someone, taking, stealing someone's identity. And while in jail, he did portraits. And you can see those, if you go to the Norton Museum of Art now, they have an exhibit of, his, of the portraits he made in black and white drawings. But very colorful, right, fun, pop art. A uh, very street art. It looks like spray painted. And here I am uh, with Patty, who's with us today on January 24th. Uh, uh, also, uh, Sharon Nottingham, and uh, we have uh, from the Boca Museum. And uh, the name of it was called Imagining Florida History and Myth in the Sunshine, Shun, Sunshine State. <laughs> and on display there were Murals, you can go right now to the Summit Boulevard main post office in Palm Beach County. We have a main post office and you can see six mural panels by Stephen Dohannes of the history of postal working and then the dangers of the barefoot mailmen and the alligators and, and how difficult it was years ago to be a postal worker in Palm Beach County. Right now in downtown Lake Worth, you can go to the post office on Lucerne. And you can see here again, the alligator, you know, and the postal worker trying to deliver the mail. Just think, you know, how difficult it must have been years ago. This is 1946, Joseph D. Myers. You can go right now to the Boynton Beach Women's Club, which is Federal Highway. It's a historic building. It's on the National Historic Registry uh, by uh, Meisner. It's a Meisner building. And we see this lovely mural in here and uh, very, very formal. This no longer exists. This is a mosaic mural by Lee Olson and the Palm Beach Publix had four of these murals. And of course, this is the Ponce de Leon, the history of Florida. So mosaic tiles 
mean all the tiles are equal. Say they're all one inch and you go blue, 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 and then you put green, green, and then one blue. And so they're laid across in a design. You make a sketch. And if you go uh, to the new Publix, they have uh, photographs uh, made into posters inside the Publix. So when I was writing my book, Murals of the Palm Beaches, I wanted to include Patty Mills. She has 200 ceramic tile murals in Palm Beach County. And I could not find her for years. I was looking for her. And then when I found her, we became best friends. We're on Facebook together. She lives in Winter Haven. And uh, she's this great lady. She does all kinds of things in the community. She's a mover and shaker. She's in her late 80s. And um, this is one of her murals in Boca. So a ceramic tile mural is where all the tiles are equal. Again, these are four inch tiles. And here you lay them out and you hand paint a mural. Then you bake the tiles and then they're installed. So this is an enormous effort and she has 200 of these murals and they're all endangered. Uh, the one right here on Atlantic and military, we got a new Publix and they tore down the mural and I went every day and I begged them. They gave me some of the tiles for our, you know, archives, our historic archives. And um, it was just, you know, important to me to save some of the, that. Leslie Davidson and Alex Carrington on the Armory Art Center Sculpture Building. Remember we said Art Deco is a glass block. Here we see some glass block. She did a project called Wall Together. And this is shaped tiles. So here you draw a picture of, a, in this case, the panther. They outlined it in mirror tiles. Here you can see here they're outlining. And then you fill in with shaped tiles. Now what's interesting is they have this ceramic kiln at the Armory Art Center, so they made all the tiles or, and they broke things. So this is like broken pieces. So now we've seen three kinds of tile murals, mosaic, ceramic, and pieced. Anyway, because it was the Armory Art Center, everyone thought I did this mural. So I volunteered and worked on this mural because everywhere I went for two years, people would say to me, oh, I see your mural at the Armory. But it was really, Alex Kellington, who we lost, and uh, Leslie Davidson. Here it is, the finished product. And if you are at the Kravis Center, which is Okeechobee Boulevard on Parker, heading south in your car, on the left-hand side, you would see the Armory Art Center with the, the blue sculpture roof we talked about and this uh, pieced uh, tile mural. Directly across the street, you would see this very large mural on a warehouse district. This was painted by uh, Sol Scenic, by uh, Jorge Pardo from California designed it and this crew uh, painted it. This is also the warm and cool colors that we talk about, the red, orange, and yellow, contrasting the blues and greens, the cool colors. So now I've done ceramic tile murals. I collaborated with Sean Terrell who had a ceramic studio and we painted 300 ceramic tile murals for the Boca Express Counter Hornley train station in South Boca on Federal Highway. We had all the sponsors names uh, for Boca Historic Society. We did other ceramic trial murals at Rosemont Park, which is a, a pocket park in Delray Beach, uh, kind of near City Hall. And it was called Rosemont Park. So I worked with the kids. I drew all these roses and they painted them in. And many of you don't know, I did the ceramic tile archway for Pineapple Grove. Okay, so it says Pineapple Grove Historic Arts District. And I did this inlay. If you open these up, they're tw it measures 28 foot wide by four foot tall. You wouldn't realize it because they're in the round three dimensional. This mural uh, sits right next to uh, this ceramic tile uh, installation, we should call it, is right by the pineapple mural done by uh, Nita Lovett. Here's another tile mural I did. We call this the family trio in the uh, Seminole uh, Indian Park area of Westgate in West Palm Beach is a city called City of Westgate. 
and we wanted to bring the family together. So it, it has all Indian tribe names of the streets and the avenues. And so we did totem pole. Also for the city of Westgate every year, I draw out a mural on canvas, recognize these panels that I did for my alone together in my living room, right? So I, I took out the panels and I draw a mural. Uh, this year we are celebrating superheroes for the city of Westgate, the community redevelopment agency. And then the kids in four hours, color it in <clears throat> and they're all wearing superhero costumes. How cool, Spider-Man and Superman. Batman, <clears throat> and in four hours, with a lot of help, <laughs> we painted it. And I roll up the mural and then they hang it in City Hall all year or in the gymnasium of the community building. And I've done about 12 of these murals every year I work for the city of Westgate. At Old School Square, uh, they had a children's room on the second floor and every year, look, I'm painting directly on the wall. This was for Over the Rainbow. They had a, a Wizard of Oz exhibit. And then they kept asking me to paint over the same wall eight times. So what I started to do was I put canvas on the wall and then part of it would be on canvas and part of it would not. So this is still painted directly on the wall. Actually, the kids made three dimensional fish out of paper mache and we put it on. This is still painted directly on the wall. This is a canvas here on the other side. We took a canvas. Here they're coloring it in with markers. That's where I started doing the Westgate. Here, Gloria Regine Adams and her granddaughter signed the mural from Old School Square. She's retired now. With the kids, we would do all kinds of great things. Like it would be a, a student show for adults. Well, I want the kids to participate and I didn't want the kids to have to frame their work. So we took cardboard and we'd cut out these big fish and the kids would paint it and we'd just make a whole big fish installation of the students' work. It would be kind of better than sometimes the adult work. At Old School Square, we had these other walls. Here you can say, it looks like I have a canvas here because I painted on this and we were doing the Seminole Tribe. So I said, well, let's make it three dimensional, the Chicky Hut. And here we can see the canvas line is right here. I don't know if you could see it. There's a canvas line right here. So this part of the mural got saved. Here's the, here's the bottom of the canvas line. But I paint the whole wall. And then when they wanted me to repaint it, we would just roll this up. Actually, we installed this at the puppetry center for a while. Here we did a Barbie mural, again on the wall, again with canvas. Barbie and Ken. And here it is finished. Got a big Barbie exhibit at the Armory. Oh, at Old School Square, so sorry. <laughs> they had these walls. We, we did, again, the three-dimensional butterflies. And, that, you know, just create a whole installation. Murals, things hanging from the ceiling. You know, any way we can, can have fun and make art and, and, and learn about color. There's no mistakes in art. It's just fun. So then I, you know, I said, hey, why don't we go monochromatic? That means one color, light to dark, black to white. So I went monochromatic background. It was called Cats, the mural. And I did all kinds of cats from pussy cats to lions and tigers. But I did the black and white contrasting the colors. And then I made all the eyes and glitter, all oh, the sparkle. Then they had me do another mural on the same wall. I, I was really connected to this wall for putting around the golf and they wanted to have neon, a fluorescent mural. So I had to learn about <clears throat> fluorescent paint and look at that, they had the little miniature golf right here in the room and the mural all lit up. It was fabulous. It's a great shot. Here I am playing the golf <laughs> without, the, without the lights up. One more mural, I think this is the last one on the same wall, beautiful mural, they had a kite exhibit all these fabulous kites throughout the museum of the, it's called the Cornell Museum of Art at Old School Square. And, um, and we, we put this whole, all this has been saved on canvas. I had a, a one man show there actually, retrospective. We took all the canvas murals and put them in one room. And just recently at the Fieldhouse, which is the gymnasium at Old School Square, 
they were just gonna have a fun night where everybody would come and paint a square. So I drew these squares and we painted them in the five colors of old school square representing the five buildings. They have a gymnasium, an amphitheater, the museum, the school, and what is the fifth one? I'm forgetting. <laughs> I guess the outdoor pavilion, there we go. So uh, when the, we have a class, they'll have a meet the teachers. So they're so smart. They, you know, they give you a table and you, you, know, you get to talk to people. And if people want to take your class, they get to ask you questions. And they're so smart. Right next to my table, they put up a canvas, knowing that I'm going to say, OK, I'll do it. So I, with masking tape, I wrote the words, make your mark. And then everybody just came over and, 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 and painted it and, and just picked up a brush. We had paints there and we made sure it was all painted over. Here's Ralph Papa, uh, one of the instructors at Old School Square. So you know, everybody just came and painted a little heart or a star or whatever, but this went on for a few hours. And then I pulled off the tape and there it was, make your mark. <laughs> just fun. Just without any planning, just jump in and paint. So I like to paint on all kinds of things. Uh, there was something called Keys to the City. And I had Copeland Davis, the most famous piano player we have in Palm Beach County, uh, played on my piano. It was called Keys to the City, where they got, uh, I don't know, 30 pianos, and they got artists to paint on pianos. And of course, I asked for the biggest one, not a baby grand, but a full grand piano. And here I did keys in the keyhole, and I, I did a piano key city. Uh, I did a tribute for my father, uh, Papa Ruby, uh, who had passed away, uh, uh, Keys to Heaven. And um, it was a great project. We had chairs in Delray. We had 12 chairs, all with different colors of the rainbow, you know, purple to blue to blue green to green, to yellow to orange. Uh, we picked these Adirondack chairs. I cut out mural panels. And we did all the fun things and Delray had to offer like the Spady Museum and the Haitian community. And uh, they were placed all over the city and you would just sit on them and take a picture. Flower Festival, we did this twice, 15,000 flowers in patience. And we took kids art and we designed it just like a hook rug, just like a mosaic tile. We would go uh, white, 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 white across or he would go white, white, white. Uh, and then put in a yellow, they had graphs, and we just followed the kids' art. And this would be up for like three months on Veterans Park, by, uh, the Intracoastal Waterway. And we had to have volunteers watering it. We had 75 volunteers uh, putting this all together, but I designed the whole thing and planned the whole thing twice. We had the Open Door Project with Glenn Weiss, who's now the uh, director of Art and Public Places in Boynton Beach. We got Glenn Weiss back in town. And he did something called the cultural loop. So my partner was Joe Gilly at Old School Square. And we had 111 doors painted by artists. I got the, all the doors donated and we dragged them over to Old School Square. Actual old doors with doorknobs and whatever they were, keys and screen doors, any kind of door. Um, I still have this one door from a school that was carved by uh, Sean Terrell. And um, we had them on display for like six months. They were a real destination. Here you can see them painting in the amphitheater in backstage at Old School Square. And here we are. And we had them in a revolving pattern. You'd walk around and walk through the doors, like revolving doors. This is the one that I saved. I still have this. Uh, they did have to, for the hurricane season, be taken down. Puppets, I'm known for my giant puppets, besides murals, all these large scale projects with, with the community, with working with people, mixed media, using different mediums, three dimensional. We had uh, 12 puppets and all this effort for just Marsha and a parade for New Year's Eve. I did this for about 15 years and we would change the outfits of the puppets. And uh, here I made the jazz man, uh, you know, all the wonderful things, again, the Haitian community, the Spanish community, in Delray, um, Amer all America City. Public art, I was chairperson of public art in Delray where we brought kids art into bus shelters all throughout the city in our bus shelters. We have this on Federal Highway, Knowles Park. 
Uh, John Clemens is the artist from Brooklyn. I won the Muse Award from the Palm Beach County Cultural Council for 2014 and 16. Uh, this is the Muse Award uh, sculpture that you are awarded. It's kind of like winning the Oscar. It's great fun. Here I am with uh, the Old School Square Education Coordinator and uh, my friend. And, uh, but you know, uh, all kinds of murals do I paint. This is a, a Cezanne style mural for at the uh, Sheridan Hotel in West Palm Beach. They had a Cezanne room, uh, a music jazz room. And uh, I have murals, I had murals in Palm Beach County International Airport, PBIA. On one side, we had the fish mural and the other terminal, we had the uh, sailboats. So if you went to the restaurants in the Palm Beach County Airport, you would see my murals. Although they lasted 10 years, murals get painted over. Sad, but beautiful. So what is all this stuff that we hear about? Street art versus graffiti. You know, I'm a mural artist. See, when I started painting murals, you couldn't get them approved. Nobody wanted a mural. Oh, it's graffiti. It's tagging. Tagging is when you spray paint your name, you know, or your logo. But street art is the new thing we hear about all the time. So street art, both usually are used with spray paint and they're outdoors, right? Usually graffiti and, and street art are both outdoors. Street art is now sanctioned. It's legal. It's commissioned. Talented artists are being paid. Instead of graffiti, you know, you'd, you'd go do it, you know, in the middle of the night, nobody would see you, you could get arrested, you know, you were defacing public property. Now street art is legal. They realize, you know, you can't fight it anymore. Let's just pay these artists. They have talent. Let's tell them what we want and let's sanction them. Let's make our cities beautiful. Let's have landmark. Let's have sense of place. So graffiti is usually tagged. It's destructive. It's illegal. So street art, I have noticed because I've written my book and I've researched and I document everything, they're usually portraits and they're usually geometric or geometric portraits. But it's like an open air museum when we have art. But what, what I don't like about some of the street art that I see, even though I love color and art, it's not always site specific. In this case, uh, Rag Tops, which is an auto uh, show, showcase place. The Street Art Revolution by Karen Bowman. She works with Eduardo Mendieta, who He's now our hottest street artist. And Dahlia Perryman. They formed a group uh, along with Anthony Hernandez. And you can see that this is spray paint. And uh, anyway, but here they got paid to paint a car mural. I show this because it's an Art Deco mural. Okay. But uh, Nicole Henry brought this thing called uh, Open Museum, Canvas Museum to West Palm Beach and brought 10 international artists. This is uh, one of them was on Avernia Street. And I have the people here so you can see how the scale of how big it is. But overnight, there were 10 murals in West Palm Beach. And she did it the following year, 10 more murals. She left West Palm Beach the following year, went to, um, Lake Worth, and instantly painted 10 murals there. Both of these cities really decide, well, maybe they don't need Nicole. They can you know, get their own artists to paint murals. So, so now murals are, are popular, but we saw this already. This is the Cultural Council building. And we see what I said, where we see the portraits and the geometry. This is uh, Eduardo, he, he calls himself Emo Mendieta. He got his friends together and they're painting a lot of parking garages in West Palm, which make them more user friendly. You know, parking garages get a little creepy, but they're illuminated and, you, you know, they're fun to walk up the stairwells or down the stairwells. You can also remember what level you're on because now you're on the green level. So they're color coded and they uh, are decorative and safe. So, uh, I did this really great project recently with Art and Public Places of Palm Beach County, Elena Toby Singer, at the Boys and Girls Club of America out in Belle Glade. I did this in eight sessions. We called it Body Graphics, where kids posed, I drew their silhouettes, then they told me what they wanted, like a rocket ship or a dollar sign or a musical 
a G clef. And the kids painted them in in warm and cool colors in the gymnasium indoors. So we were safe from the elements. And then we hung it outside. It's an 80 foot mural. And you can see this if you were ever uh, driving uh, out west, uh, passing through Bell Glade. Uh, this is uh, the road out there that takes you around Lake Okeechobee. It's an 80 foot mural of warm and cool colors of the Boys and Girls Club of the Americas. But again, I tell you, I love when we see real change here. And here's the Delray Beach. We see this wall on West Atlantic Avenue, which now has many murals, but none of mine. <laughs> but we took this horrible looking wall and look at this. They had to lower the phone for uh, you know handicapped drug dealers, I say. But I got rid of all this, which is impossible. I made phone calls. I said, you have to remove this. You have to change this. You have to remove this. And we turned it into this with a garden. That's what change is about. That's how murals can change a community and make it for the better. And this, we painted both sides of the building. Okay, so this represents the old Florida. And this represents the, you know, the new Del Rey with its restaurants and music and jazz on the streets and the gladiola, which Del Rey is the gladiola capital with my little art deco rounded corners, my border and my warm versus cool. These murals are uh, no longer there, but there are other decorative murals if you drive along West Atlantic Avenue towards downtown from I-95. And here we're going to show you a whole little project. We're going really fast now. Um, Palm Springs Middle School. They built an Art Deco school in 2007. And this was the former Jeff Davis, which they've now changed the name. You know, Jeff Davis is not politically correct to Palm Springs Middle. So what we have here is it's not historic, so you can't really call it Art Deco. I coined the word deco metric. They took the Art Deco qualities and the geometric qualities. We see the banding, the stepping up, the, the, the stripes, the racing stripes, deco metric. And here I make a sketch. This is the library. What do they want in the media center? Oh, which is a room full of books. We want more books. So here I make books and I found pictures of Art Deco statues holding books and Art Deco ladies reading books. Here's Papa Ruby who worked with me. And here he is transferring a design onto the wall. And here it's in progress. You can see, I love to outline. This is three coats of paint to get this rich flatness. You just don't paint uh, loosely. It's a very tight graphic painting, three coats of paint. And then I outline with a ruler uh, everything in a gold or silver marker, which is reflecting the light. And this is the outcome. They had Art Deco furniture, which we know has the rounded corners and the three racing stripes. And these are the colors of the school, the earth tones contrasting with blue. And Schenkel Schultz won awards for this building. And my book came out, which was on the front page of the Palm Beach Post at this time. And they called me up and they say, oh, Oh, you're Sharon Koskoff. You wrote the book, Art Deco Society of the Palm Beaches. Uh, you know, we, we just built a deco metric building. I said, I know, I'm the artist that was working in there for, for three months during the summer painting your murals. <laughs> they, had, they couldn't connect that. So I'm like two people. Here we are working without air conditioning, working with the alarms going beep, 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 you know, while they're testing everything and moving everything and scaffolding and ladders. And, and this is the uh, food line at the school. And here, working on concrete block, which is so hard to paint. It's on the, look at when you paint, it doesn't cover. Here I draw it out and I block out the colors. Here it is finished. Here's another wall with Papa Ruby. We can see here, this needs a second coat, right? Can you see that? But here we see the Art Deco stepping up and the geometric uh, design uh, there logo was the stingray. So we would have the floating stingray on the New York skyline. Here, my assistant Jeff Locke is working. We're looking at the gymnasium. We're on scaffolding and high ladders and you know, all different blue hands and brown people and orange people, why not? But again, why work on one wall of a mural? We work on all the sides. Look at the sides of the mural. There's the stingray again. 
and the other side of the mural, the other side of the wall, the entrance to the gymnasium. Here's another great thing. We talked about that Art in the Alley project, but we have about 10 alleys. If you go to artinthealley.org, artinthealley.org, we have a website and we have a map you can download. So this particular wall is an alley, see it's a road in Osceola Park. Right here is actually Federal Highway in Delray and obviously needed help. And we were gonna do the party. So one day we paint and one day we party. So we were gonna do the party on Valentine's Day. So we called our theme that year, Heart in the Alley, Hearts in the Alley. But I could not hang art on this wall. So the first thing I did was paint it up. I brought some blue paint and some yellow as I made green and I painted, and I, I made the alley beautiful right from the start. Then James Quillian, James and Lisa Quillian, who were my partners, they hung the art while people watched. <laughs> we see all the heart art, the themed art, the hearts in the alley. And then we have a big block party, free food and music and everybody dancing. This is a different alley, obviously, but I'm showing you the party of everybody having a good time. This was the Mardi Gras. I could see people wearing Mardi Gras costumes. We get dressed up in costumes. This one, we had cats in the alley. Here we are with art all over the, the, the uh, fences and here I'm dressed as a cat and our dogs, cats and dogs in the alley. We did face painting and one day paint. So we didn't have it this year, but I did do a Zoom of 10 year retrospective of artinthealley.org. And uh, we can see that on, on uh, YouTube right now. So here's my book, Murals of the Palm Beaches. Here I'm painting a mural in Lake Worth. And we're gonna show one more th that's very, very important to me. This is the first mural in Del Rey. See now when they paint murals, they kind of paint whatever they want, which I'm saying it's not site specific. Site specific means you have a wall and you look at its environment. You look at the other buildings. You look at uh, what the neighborhood is going on. So this was the Love's Drug building. It was a drugstore. This is the, the sign. So we called it the Love's Drug mural. And the building was from the 50s. And the side of the building had this kind of brick face. So we incorporated this brick face. And I did three sections, even though it's not an Art Deco mural, but it was Pineapple Grove. We, included the pineapple, and we paint, planted pineapples as a garden. So we took the history of Delray, and we did one of the first murals. After this, I got eight consecutive grants to work in the community from 1994 to, I guess, 2002 or three, and we painted murals throughout Delray, but we couldn't get them approved, even though this was such a success. So I wound up painting in schools because schools, you didn't need approval. But here we see the train station and we look, we painted the sea grapes and we planted sea grapes. Here we have the famous tomato crate man, the agriculture of Delray. And this is the beach, the beach pavilion with the old fashioned cars from the forties. We, we, it was a wonderful project. So when it came time to tear down that building to create the old school square parking garage, that made me very sad, but I wasn't gonna fight the city. I want, you know, we, we work with everyone, we, we collaborate. So I went to the city and I said, could you give us a party to close? All these hundreds of volunteers that worked on the mural that donated paint to the project, donated mulch and all these things. Why don't we have to say goodbye to the mural? So we had the, the mayor, Jay Alperin, we had Bill Nix from the Cultural Council. They brought us a tent, we had a cake. And the night before I said to myself, you're getting ready for this party, this, this farewell to the love drug. If anyone's gonna tear down this mural, if anyone's gonna destroy this mural, it's gonna be me, it's gonna be us. So we bought spray paint and we spray painted, we graffitied the mural with all happy things like old school square and buysharon.com and iHeart 
loves drug mural. And the newspapers came out and took pictures of us. Look how the mural has faded. And they tore down the mural and I got video and I was there from the beginning, the middle, the end. You know, this was a very, very important thing. I got some of these bricks, which are in my garden, which the Delray Beach Historic Society has some of these bricks in their outdoor garden. And, and it's just a, a wonderful thing to see something enjoyed by the city for such a long time. And to say goodbye, because demolition is forever. In this case, they actually tore down the building. Sometimes they just paint over a project. So I want to thank you all for today and uh, bless you. Please stay safe. This COVID thing really it might be over, but really there's still people getting it. Please stay safe. And uh, thank you. Thank you, Sharon. Neda, are you there? Do you want to say a few words? I'm trying to stop my sharing of the screen. Stop share. Uh, does anybody have any questions? There's nothing in the chat. Wait, Jay, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I just wanted to say, Sharon, this was absolutely fascinating. And not only work was is your work gorgeous, but seeing all these different buildings and areas that we had no idea. We we think we know the Palm Beaches, but I guess we don't. And seeing all the work that you've done and the breadth of the work you've done is absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for your presentation. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Thank you, that's really nice. You know, I, I look at these things, I, I, I'm in bewilderment myself. Each, each mural could have an entire story. Could, I could write a whole book. Uh, so I, I appreciate you. Um, you know, living through my history, but I could write a book on every single one. It's, it's, uh, we don't have enough time. I know, but it's wonderful. And, and I think that you probably have created a, an interest in something in many of our members, an interest that they didn't, didn't realize they might have. Well, you know, th there's something for everybody. You're not supposed, you know, you're not going to like every mural, but you might remember it or, or it might trigger something. Um, but what I really love about history and preservation and now preservation of murals and is that we, we, we reached a new plateau now. Murals are accepted. We, we don't fear murals. We're not afraid of murals. Um, new and young and upcoming artists can express themselves. They can travel around the world. Um, someone before we opened up today asked me about Wynwood murals. Those are the street artists. Um, <laughs> Some are local, but really they fly them in from all over to create this international neighborhood that used to be nothing. It was an old, broken down warehouse district. And now it's this thriving. There's a Target, there's a Ross, you know, there's restaurants. They you really yeah. rejuvenate a neighborhood. And and that's, you know, Delray uh, doesn't have a Delray, uh, South Florida. You know, everything is east. I'm sorry. You, you all live out west, which is a joke. You know, what do you live, three miles west? <laughs> it's considered out west. We, we don't have a lot of uh, land uh, here. So uh, we were talking about all that. So we want to pr preserve our historic architecture. We want to build new architecture. Um, and, you know, move into the, the new future generations is really what we want to do. Uh, I, I heard today we're having a, a big milestone. Um, Today, May 19th, 2021, the Ford F-150 is going to uh, oh, introduce an that. electric car tonight. It's, it's amazing. The, the number one selling vehicle forever and ever and ever in the United States, in the world, consistently. And when they bring this electric car out tonight, it's going to change the planet. You know, we're, we're, we live in our own little homes, but we're really part of the planet. And uh, this is going to be a big milestone tonight, this electric truck. So I look forward to, to learning about that. Sharon? Yes. Sharon, it's Barbara. I just want to thank you. Your energy is amazing. Your talents are incredible. I don't know how you do all of this, but I want to be like you. <laughs> you Barbara, you, you are driven. You're a great artist because you make art all the time. Uh, my friend Patricia Peters, she makes art all the time. It, you, you, you have this art energy and creativity and we're all drawn together. All the people in the culture club, you, whether you're making art or not, 
you, you, you feel these uh, creative energies and you appreciate art and, and what we do. So thank you all. Uh, Sharon, somebody thank wants you. to know you were recording this. Um, will it be up on YouTube? Now, uh, uh, yes, this... I, I will edit out the <laughs> beginning and I'll put it on YouTube. And so you could, um, I'll email you the link. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, we can sign on. Thank you. you. It's wonderful. And we'll see you all in the clubhouse soon. We hope. Uh, that, that would be that would be so great. I can't wait. And thank you, Jake. Okay. Take care, all. Bye, bye. Thank you for a great meeting. Thank you. I wish I could sign my book for everyone. <laughs> okay. She's. I have.